something out here. Something only you might understand. That is one big pile of shit. Independence Day Resurgence is without a doubt one of the worst sequels I've ever seen in my life. And trust me, I've seen a lot of bad sequels in my day. But this one managed to really piss me off. And the more I think about it, the more angry I get. So I figured I'd talk about what it is that bothered me so much about it. So let's get down to why I consider Independence Day Resurgence to just be plain bad. Spoilers ahead, but trust me, it doesn't matter. This movie is four years old and not very good, so you won't really care. Back in the 90s. Now before I talk about Resurgence, I should give my quick thoughts on the original Independence Day. For those of you who don't know, Independence Day was an action movie released in 1996 starring Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, and a whole host of other people. It's basically about a bunch of aliens invading Earth and us humans fighting back, and it takes place on the 4th of July. Simple, right? Well, yeah, there's really not much to talk about other than it's just a really fun movie. It's nowhere near a cinematic masterpiece or a subversion of action movies, it's just as dumb as a Hollywood sci-fi flick can get. With Will Smith punching an alien in the face. Welcome to Earth. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. I'm probably a bigger fan of it than most, but that's because I can't bring myself to hate it. I admit it's not very good, all things considered. It's pretty cheesy and dumb, but I still like it. I would totally recommend it if you haven't seen it yet. It's how to do dumb right. Whereas this movie is how to do dumb wrong. This is bad. Hey, world! When I was first starting the script, I planned on calling the video Independence Day Resurgence is Disappointingly Bland. I've already used the term disappointingly bland in two videos already, and I feel it describes a lot of movies. A movie that is not only disappointing, but also doesn't have any substance to it to make me care in the slightest. Not the worst, but nothing special. Hence why I would call it bland as well. I'm sure there are plenty of other movies I could call disappointingly bland, but I realize that Resurgence isn't one of them. Because, well, it's just plain bad. I wasn't expecting this movie to be good, so I can't say I was disappointed, and I wouldn't call this movie bland either. Sure, things in it are bland, like the characters, the acting, the visuals, the everything, culminating into a product that is overall bad. Monsters University had good elements to it. So did BVS. Uh, kind of. This doesn't. Let's start at the beginning. So the movie starts and already is reminding you how good the first one was because over the numerous studio logos, Bill Pullman's speech from the first movie is playing. You will once again be fighting for our freedom. And you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Do you remember the first movie? Remember the awesome speech? Remember? Now I expected this movie to have a lot of easter eggs and references to the first movie. It seemed inevitable. When a nostalgic movie from back in the day gets a reboot or sequel, it's almost 100% guaranteed you're going to be reminded of the original movie in some way. References to the original, actors returning to roles, playing the score of the movie to tug at your heartstrings. It's almost always the case with these movies and it's very annoying. Because why watch a movie for real when you can cheat and trick the audience into liking it by reminding them of better movies? This movie also has a really big problem with exposition. 20 years is a long time and so there is a lot of ground to cover on catching the audience up. There's also some new characters this time and we need to know how they fit into the story. And guess what? It all sucks. Hey old friend, remember the time I almost killed you because I am a reckless individual with a traumatic past and I have a girlfriend who works in the White House? Why yes, fellow movie character, I remember that time. It reminds me of this other time when I was doing things and setting up my character so the audience can understand who I am as a person. I am very interesting, audience. Trust me. I mean, geez, if I had a nickel every time a character said remember to another character who would obviously remember, I'd have plenty of nickels. Anyway, a giant sphere appears in space and so the humans blow it up because anything different from them is bad. Turns out it wasn't the aliens from the first movie, but then they show up too and completely decimate half the planet by just landing there. You know, 20 years of rebuilding and preparing for another attack and everything goes to shit immediately. 
What an absolute joke. Oh, and Brent Spiner is in this movie again. Turns out he was in a coma for 20 years. Yeah, because apparently getting choked by an extraterrestrial puts you in a coma for 20 years. So the aliens are back, and everyone is trying to figure out how to defeat them this time. Also, while that's going on, Judd Hirsch is back from the first movie and on a road trip with some random kids and Wish Upon star Joey King. Also, while that's going on, some random boat in the middle of the Atlantic is keeping an eye out on the aliens because apparently they're drilling to the Earth's core to destroy the world. As you can probably tell, there is way too much going on in this movie and not a single plotline is interesting. I don't care about anything going on because I don't care about any of these characters. Even the returning characters that I liked in the first one just don't have the same presence that they had not before. Like I said, the first movie wasn't some grand masterpiece. It was grand in scale and scope, but in terms of story and characters, it kinda lacked. It wasn't horrible, but it pretty much goes the exact way you'd expect. Nothing is surprising, no characters or events are especially new or unique, it's all pretty standard, all things considered but it at least had some charm to it. I like seeing Will Smith interact with Jeff Goldblum. I like the cheesy action and dialogue. It's all so much fun. This movie tries to recapture that fun, but fails miserably. And that leads to my biggest problem with the movie. I know, I know, I have a lot of problems with this movie, but the biggest one to me has to be how it handles raising the stakes. What I mean is how the movie tries to keep you interested by just making everything bigger. It's basically just trying to be bigger and expecting that's enough to make us care. Bigger ship, bigger threat, right? Well, remember in Force Awakens how the Star Killer base was a bigger threat than the Death Star, and then it was just destroyed just as easily as the Death Star, if not more easily? And then to raise the stakes even higher, Rise of Skywalker just had a million Star Destroyers with planet destroying laser cannons. Yeah, the stakes seemed pretty low in those movies, didn't it? Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker boasted having larger stakes, when really it was just bigger in size, not in threat. Hollywood seems to have this misconception that if a sequel has a bigger threat, that automatically means bigger stakes. Resurgence has a bigger ship, a bigger fleet of aliens, and that somehow equates to bigger stakes than the last movie. Well, surprisingly, I felt nothing when watching this movie. I didn't care that the ship was bigger because I didn't feel like the world was going to end. Now what I'm about to talk about may seem out of left field, but trust me when I say that I do have a point to make. While watching this movie and thinking about how much I didn't care, I was reminded of a show that actually pulled off having high stakes as it went along. I'm of course talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I know, I know, weird tangent, but bear with me. A couple months ago, I watched the entirety of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure anime, and I really loved it. I plan on talking about it more in depth at some point, but for now, I just want to talk about how this show keeps you interested, despite the ever-changing set of characters and threats. The first season of JoJo is split into two parts. The first part is about Jonathan Joestar battling his evil stepbrother, Dio, who has become a vampire and is terrorizing a small British town. It's a relatively small adventure for what it is, and it's admittedly one of the weaker storylines in JoJo that I've seen so far. However, it has enough in it that I still quite liked it. Anyway, after part one, part two begins, and it's 50 years later, and the main character is Joseph Joestar, Jonathan's grandson. And he's battling pretty much stripper gods. The stakes are much higher this time around. One might even argue too high. Where do you go with the story after Joseph battles three gods? Well, in part three, another 50 years pass by, and Dio returns to terrorize the world once more. This time, however, he's much more powerful. So Joseph's grandson, Jotaro, has to battle Dio. Three parts in a row in the Joestar bloodline has to battle powerful gods, so where does part 4 take things? Well, part 4 is where things get interesting. Rather than upping the scale again, part 4 takes place in a small town in Japan and is basically about Josuke, the bastard son of Joseph, and his friends trying to catch a serial killer. Now one may think going from battling gods to fighting a serial killer may seem like a downgrade in quality, but it isn't. Kiri Yoshikage, the serial killer, is actually a pretty threatening villain despite him not being a vampire or a god or a vampire god. He's just a normal guy with a stand ability that can blow up anything he touches, but other than that, pretty normal guy. But that's the point I'm trying to make. Stakes don't come from the antagonistic force being bigger and more powerful, but rather from how threatening they come across. I love Dio and the Pillar Men, but Kira comes across as just as threatening, arguably even more so. Now I know what you're thinking, comparing one movie to not even half of an anime seems pretty unfair. So let's also compare Resurgence attempts at high stakes with that of The Empire Strikes Back. It takes place after the events of A New Hope when they blow up the Death Star. Yet, despite not having a giant superweapon like in the last movie, the Empire still seems threatening and dangerous. So why is that? 
Well, because the Empire is using their power through other means. When Han and crew are captured at Cloud City, it's not because the Empire used a giant space weapon, but rather their political powers. They threaten Lando and his living status, they make a deal with Boba Fett, they're using other tactics besides giant space balls. That kind of makes them, I don't know, even more threatening? Because they don't need giant weapons to be intimidating, they can still get their way with or without it. So yeah. Bigger doesn't always mean badder. If a movie's only means of higher stakes is with a bigger ship and nothing else, then there's nothing to be invested in. I find it kind of funny that I probably spent more time in this video talking about Jojo and Star Wars more than the actual movie. But I honestly can't think of anything else to say about this movie other than it sucks. Give me any character, any event in this movie, and chances are I think it's shit. Hell, this movie actually has the balls to end on a sequel tease. But the way this movie went, I really hope a sequel never happens because this was a painful movie to sit through. The only thing I can probably think of in terms of compliments I can give this movie is I guess the effects were decent. It didn't look great, but it also didn't look horrible either. Remember how in the first movie when they blew up the White House, Empire State Building, and the US Bank Tower? Yeah, that was pretty cool. There was nothing like that in this movie. Just explosions and action and shit being thrown around and none of it was cool. This is a worthless movie and one of the worst sequels I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm giving it a 2 out of 10. Please don't watch it. Please. Alright, we got you. On behalf of the planet Earth, happy 4th of July. <laughs>